see there's a few people still joining, but I'm going to go ahead and get us started. I'm Mary Adams. I'm the Associate Executive Director for Mental Health Services at University Settlement. At University, we have a full continuum of mental health services and supports to support children, early childhood mental health, through our programs serving older adults. We serve families, individuals, couples, children, adolescents, college students. We serve the community. Throughout our history, we've sought to create innovative programs to truly meet the needs of the community. When the pandemic hit, there were no guidelines and no roadmaps. We had to create new innovative services to try and meet the need from the health crisis. Tonight, you'll get a small taste of one of those programs we developed specifically to meet the needs of the health crisis, Connection Circles. Barbara? Hi, everyone. Great to be in community with you tonight. Uh, my name is Barbara. I'm the Director of Family Thriving at University Settlement. And um, over the past year, I'm going to share my screen. We have developed connection circles as a methodology to support our staff and communities in response to COVID, civil unrest, anti-Asian hate, grief, and loss. Our model is a community care model. It focuses on resiliency. It's proactive. It builds community. Um, it's really to help buffer against individual and collective stress, trauma, secondary stress, for our healthcare workers, essential workers, um, and it could be used with anyone. And why do a connection circle? So now more than ever, we have realized the, the benefits of gathering and community. Um, and this model helps build relationship, community, and trust. It, it helps folks in a community get a pulse of what other folks are thinking. It makes people feel less alone. Um, this approach is trauma-informed and healing-centered, so not only talking about, you know, what happened to you and how are you being maybe triggered by what you're going through, but also what are the persistent traumatic stress environments? Like, what is the, what is the conditions perpetuating this stress? What systemic racism, um, as one example. So we really have been holding spaces for voices to be heard as a way to interrupt the stress cycle that people are going through right now. And the model features a few components, some of which that you'll get a taste of tonight. Uh, we start with community agreements, a grounding, emotional processing. We help folks walk through um, a series of questions focused on their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So how is the stress impacting them right now? Um, then we move to validation and psychoeducation on stress. And we end with resilience and the strength of our community, the strength of this gathering, the strength of the circle, um, and what's working for folks. What, what, are their, what are their self care practices? And reminding them that they're in community with people who support them. So, a little bit about our work. Um, we have been doing circles all around. Uh, the Lower East Side, um, PS142, for example, they're doing circles on their own for their staff community now. Uh, last night, we did a circle for PS184 in solidarity against anti-Asian hate. The District 1 superintendent was there, principal, and it was really powerful. And this is just a sample of some of the work that we've done around the community. So I'm looking forward to us uh, being in community tonight and getting a taste of this in our connection circle. So I'm gonna pass it over back to Mary. So we always start a connection circle with a grounding exercise. So I'd ask everybody to get comfortable in their seats. Imagine there's a gold thread pulling your, your head up towards the sky so that your spine is straight. Might wanna roll back your shoulders. You can close your eyes if you want. And take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, exhale as if you're blowing out through a straw, slowly. Inhale again. 
Let your exhale go out through the straw slightly longer than your deep inhale was. And again, a deep inhale in and the straw breath out. You can open your eyes. We usually spend a little bit more time on the grounding exer exercise because although many of us know the value of taking a breath and breathing, we don't stop and do it, whether it's the middle of a pandemic or not. Barbara? So now that we're feeling a bit more centered, we're going to use a couple of questions to guide our conversation in reflection of the past year. And we hope that this gives you an opportunity to stop and process especially in community with each other here right now. And that's one action that can promote healing is gathering together and pausing. So usually we do this by going around the room and giving everybody an opportunity to say something and respond verbally. Um, but for the sake of time, we're going to do this virtually. Um, and we're gonna ask you to participate in written form. So I'm gonna share my screen and there's going to be directions in the chat of how you can participate as well as on the screen. So you can go to on a browser on a phone, menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com and use the code that's on the screen. And the question we have today is what's something you've missed, lost, or have grappled with in the past year? Hug, for sure. person interaction, family and friends, yes, family. We see commonalities already. My editor. Yes, there's something about the subway that that in, invokes a sense of community. And it's those little things that we, I think, have taken for granted. Community spaces, tea time at Allen Street. Yeah. Interacting with friends and family, community, strangers, yes. Like when you're having a rough day and, and, and a stranger just does something for you or a colleague does something for you in that moment. meeting new people, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Singing with my friends. Yes, those incidental opportunities or interactions for sure. Working out and swimming at Houston Street Center, yeah. Yes, and we see here that so, so many of us have been missing similar things and that there's unity in that and that we don't feel as alone when we realize that we, both, we all are going through a kind of a collective experience. Mary, you think I should I'll go to the next one? Yep. Yes. Okay. So now we wanna move into our resilience. So what's the deepest insight you've had or something you've gained over the past year? So now that we've talked about, you know, maybe what we're grieving or what we've lost, mm -hmm. what are some aha moments that you've had? 
Making mental and physical health a priority for sure. That, that helps buffer the stress cycle, right? Valuing just as much, valuing being oh, as much as so, yeah. so this Absolutely. is a. Did they understand it too? So this is. Okay. I don't know what the I don't know what the oh. genetics are, but this is what it says that you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I can't. I can't. Okay, thank you. <laughs> We're all moving too fast before, and it has felt therapeutic to slow down and stay in place. Yes. Right. Every the pace we we had maybe was not so healthy. Right, the, the, the importance of human interaction, absolutely. Faith, more time to reflect. And I think, you know, as, as the, since we we're at one year of this, realizing all of that we've, all that we've overcome and been through together is really important. Mary, do you have anything to add? I always jot down notes <clears throat> in the middle of our circles. And I was struck by the, 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 the missing of family and the norms and the knitting group and how much we really had experienced such loss with just those simple rituals and, and simple connections. But then going into the resilience just the idea that simple is maybe better. And, and somebody said, value just being. And so helping all of us to just stop and look at ourselves, as you're saying, Barbara, has been so powerful and really is woven in through all of these comments. Right. Thank you, everybody, for participating in this. Well, I'll toss it back over to Mary. So normally we're sitting in a circle, even a virtual circle, and everybody has an opportunity to process their thoughts and put it out into the group. Often we're meeting with people that are not doing that elsewhere. They don't have it in their lives. They're home with three children and have no adults that they're communicating with. The idea is, is that we do gain and grow from loss and from trauma and that we have to look for those resiliencies and build them together. And sometimes just saying it out loud and having it validated and having it listened to can be the most valuable medicine for trauma and for loss and for trying to start over. So the purpose of our group has been to meet those needs, as Barbara said, whether it was a bereavement and grief loss, whether it was just an isolation uh, coping with COVID group, or whether it was an anti-Asian hate, Black Lives Matter support, the idea was to provide space virtually suddenly when we needed it so desperately. And what we found is that time and again, people were brought together, were tearful, were honest, were genuine, and were able to leave feeling more connected. We wish that we could have done uh, an hour and 20 minute group tonight, but we couldn't quite fit it in the gala schedule. <laughs> yeah. And I know with and having everybody, we would love to hear your voices, but we hope that this gave you some time to pause and reflect at least. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, everybody, and stay well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're supposed to leave and stay or stay until we go back. How much time do we have left, Dave? I have not been timing us. Uh, I don't know, but I think if we, if, if people leave the room, we will go back to the main room, I believe. So I'm going to try okay. that. And if I, yeah, we have uh, one minute, we have one minute left if you want to. Okay. If, yeah. I was just going to say, if we have like time left, if anybody has a question, mm -hmm. but we're going to get kicked out. So, <laughs> um, 
Um, but feel free if you have a question or anything, let us know while we're here. Have you been doing your circles virtually or in person? Yeah, virtually. Okay. How has um, that been? It's been it's been powerful even with the with the Zoom. Um, yeah, there's there's something about also we go around person by person to ask them this each of these prompts. And it's just it's it's still powerful, even though we're not feeling each other's energy in the space. Yeah. Some of it is that there weren't other things in place to deal with COVID because there was nothing there and nobody knew what to do. So we have found that community members have come to us and said, can you do this for our parents, our parents from our school? Can you do this for our staff? Can you train our staff? We've trained professionals that are, that are our service providers in the COVID environment. So it can be sort of retrofitted for um, what, whatever purpose. And it's just, it's been simple, but it has been the one thing that we could provide very easily to everybody equitably. I love it. It was great tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, thank you, thank you for coming. It's a, it was just a short taste, but um, really wonderful to see everybody here. I agree, Ronald. <laughs>